What's up, everyone? Let's make sure that everything's stable. There we go. I think the camera's going. Nah, I hope you all are doing fine. It's the... I guess it's Black Friday. That defines the day pretty well. I didn't realize it till just now. But, uh, yeah, yesterday was Thanksgiving. It was a uh, day of gratitude for us, you know. Small family gathering and whatnot. And, uh... I've been doing a lot of thinking over the last couple days about who we are as people, who I am as a person, what makes us think that we can understand what sanity really is, or what's normal, how we define ourselves in society. A couple different things that inspired me to kind of make this video. One was actually a subscriber that not a subscriber, just a random person who ran across one of my videos about uh, antidepressants on YouTube. And uh, she said that it was something to the effect of don't give your kids drugs. And she said that the doctor wants to give her seven-year-old, uh, uh, what is it called, Vyvanse, which is, I guess, another, you know, ADHD drug, like Ritalin but uh, different, of course, and there are a million compounds of drugs that they can give you. But the whole idea is to make kids normal. I call ADHD, otherwise known as KIDS, kids. Some kids are more rambunctious than others. And the question is whether or not we're supposed to foster and harness those children who are overly excited. Um, or try to numb them so they'll cope and deal with the school system which is completely failing us, which doesn't take into account children who need a little more help, or even children who are just more uh, artistic and pushes them out to the outskirts and, you know, a lot of people get left behind. I mean, it's a fact, a lot of creative people end up dropping out of school and having all kinds of problems. It's something we know well in society, and uh, instead of fixing that problem and trying to remedy it, we uh, just continue along blindly on this path of ignorance and self-destruction, not only medicating our kids, but medicating ourselves on a variety of substances. And the, the question I guess I propose is, what the hell is normal, you know? And, you know, I, I spoke to someone the other day who takes Ritalin, and uh, let's say there was another person who I knew that was taking Adderall, and he said it really helped him you know, because he said he had adult onset ADHD, or attention deficit disorder, and I said, I hate to break it to you, but ADD is not a real diagnosis, you know, and I know a lot of people would disagree with that, but everyone seems to have a certain degree of that within them, and some people control it differently. I, I heard one person say uh, the reason why he was taking the medication is because his on adult onset ADD was... <coughs> Uh, he had a loud voice, and he was very loud and talkative. I said, so that's something that we need to medicate now? I, I didn't understand, you know? You don't medicate ourselves because we're loud or because we're excitable. It's, um, yes, we have different brain chemistries, but, you know, if a person uh, needs to take something short-term, that's one thing. But the question of being, you know, what is reality, and who are we to say? And I know that there is a consensus reality that a lot of us follow, but... It doesn't mean that we all have the same realities within our heads. And if you've ever spoken to somebody who's having a psychotic episode, or if you've ever spoken to someone who's in an extreme bout of depression, <coughs> or someone who's doped up on the cocktail of, you know, Xanax or uh, antidepressants or Prozac, you know, whatever it may be, and uh, you hear that it helps the quality of life, but they're completely numb emotionally, it's difficult to explain that our whole society is trusting in doctors and pharma to medicate us and to give us a pill for what we call life, for something that we all have to deal with. In a way, I know that some people need meds, and that helps them immensely. I wouldn't say need. A lot of people do, but a lot more that are taking these medications, such as Adderall or uh, <coughs> uh, Prozac, you know, probably don't need to, at least not long term. But... We get so wrapped up in Big Pharma, who is easily in the doctor's pockets and convinces us that we do need a pill for everything to mask our emotions. And I'll tell you, I've bought into that before. I've had physical pain in the past, and I knew that it helped me to take uh, opioids. 
this is why I found Kratom so damn useful and ended up not using them, and for my sciatica, that's what worked. When it comes to brain chemistry, we need to be a little more careful, because taking some sort of antipsychotic or pharmaceutical or an SSRI, which, by the way, we don't really understand how they fully work, and the mechanisms of action in many of the antidepressants, or anxiolytics, they just work. Uh, but now we're starting to see the long-term damage that it can cause, and we will justify whatever we take to the end of time. I would say if an adult wants to choose to take a medication, so be it, but please don't give your kids meds, you know? If they're not old enough to decide for themselves, if a kid has a heart condition, or something's wrong with their liver, or a disease that needs to be treated, that's different than giving a kid something to just help them calm down. Because, um, you know, these drugs they give kids to calm down, they are amphetamines. And yeah, some kids are rowdier, but there are other ways to deal with that. And perhaps we don't trust nature enough. We tend to just trust that uh, the doctors know best, and that's, that's a shame. It's unfortunate. You know, I think it's either Ritalin or Adderall that's banned, actually, in Canada. I mean, a lot of countries ban a lot of medications that we consider to be very useful. But ultimately, this wasn't meant to really be about meds or even pharma. It wasn't to talk about different things, but that's a huge part of it. Our mental health as a society is dependent upon the general consensus of all the people. And no matter how much an independent person may think that they have the answers, I have seen firsthand how a person can delude themselves or how a person can go down a path where uh, there's all different types of syndromes that a person can, you know, uh, get into. I had some friends from my past, too, that you know, ended up getting into major depressive episodes and we weren't even aware of it and they just disappear for a while, you know, and then you find out that they're at a seeing a psychiatrist or whatnot and, and, you know, so I have to tread lightly here because I can't really talk specifically because some of the people that are affected might be watching this video or very well, even just for the rights of their privacy, I don't really want to go into a case-by-case -case basis, but there are very... Uh, well-to-do, I should say, not well-to-do, I think that's rich-related, but uh, <clears throat> there are many well-meaning people out there who are very kind, and all they want to do is live their life normally, and they find themselves in a, a state of mind where they have kind of lost touch with reality for a while. Now, this can be due to a drug-induced, you know, psychosis, but it can also just be from stress. Anxiety in general can cause us to literally kind of lose our mind for a minute, and to be brutally honest, you know, with myself, um, it wasn't until a couple of years ago when I had an experience on cannabis where I had uh, taken too much extract. I, it was a few years back, it was around the time when I really first started dabbing, or dabbling and dabbing, no pun intended there, uh, and having this high potency extract and smoking a bunch of it, it's not that I got too stoned and was like passing out, it's a different effect. The THC laden, very strong THC resins tend to give you a more, you know, THC by itself is a more enlightened high than a depressive high, like people tend to think of cannabis. But anyhow, uh, it put me in a state of mind where I started questioning reality and the past and the future and where I came from, where I'm going. And I went into kind of a short episode of panic but I knew better. It was kind of like, it was almost worse than having a bad trip because I've taken a lot of psychedelics in the past and they can trigger any type of pre-existing condition like psychosis or pre, uh, if a person is, you know, likely to develop psychosis or schizophrenia, they can trigger those episodes. But sometimes there's just a short-term effect where a person has an experience that uh, they carry on and continue with and kind of obsess over and end up becoming way immersed in you can have savior syndrome where you want to save other people some people have narcissistic tendencies where they think that they're actually Jesus or other people and um, in some cultures this is celebrated as something great like they're a shaman I would say we need to be a little more cautious if we're going to be realistic um, that's where it gets iffy, because there might be people in our society who are spiritually motivated, prophets, people who are inclined to speak with the divine. But we have to be careful and say, what are you bringing back? What are you bringing to the table? You know, is it just uh, rubbish for, you know, a self, a self-fulfilling prophecy or, you know, a motive beyond what we can understand? Because brains are very complicated. And that's where we get into the idea that maybe some of the prophets in the past were just ultimately deluded. And... They insisted that they were these sons of God, and they did anything they could to convince others, you know. Uh, some people in history who are very famous were probably famous because they had some sort of a, uh, I would say, 
are famous because they had a, some sort of a mental deficit which they used to their advantage where they were born perhaps autistic, slightly autistic, or um, uh, any myriad of conditions which we consider to be a weakness but y they might use as a strength. People, Even people who have epileptic seizures, some people are obsessed with it and they want to have more because they say that it gives them the most spiritually profound experience they've had in their lives. People have been known, one person switched to Christianity after an epileptic fit, then the next time they had one they switched to an atheist, and then they went to some other religion and went through all several religions, because every fit was like an intense uh, loop cycle in the brain where it kind of rewired them to believe this. And so, if you've ever spoken with someone who is deluded, it's very difficult to explain to them that some of the things they believe may be delusions and others may not. And, um, you know, I think we're all affected by some of that, but the message I want to convey is that each one of us carries that within us, that there is no person who's immune to it, that I've never met a normal person in my life. I've met people who wear all different types of masks, and uh, I wear my masks as well because that's what we do to communicate. I, they're not necessarily all bad masks, you know. We put on our business mask when we have to do business, and then we put on our friend's mask when we're with our friends. You know, you can't just laugh and bullshit with people you don't know until you get to know them. That's just how it is. There's a reason for everything, and the way we act is definitely included in that. And so me sitting here talking to you like this gives you the image that I'm a serious person, but I crack jokes, all kinds of foul, you know, uh, ridiculous jokes with my friends and my brother. And I thought about that the other day, you know, that I seem like a pretty, probably a pretty... You know, straightforward guy, but really, I'm a yeah, I'm a deep thinker. I'm a philosopher, but I'm a laughing kind of Zen-like philosopher. I like to joke around about shit, and I don't take myself or anything else too seriously. I just enjoy life. I know that I'm a little bit nuts, and I know that everyone is, and I know that's because none of us are nuts. We all just have, you know, show me the model citizen, and tell me why they're the model citizen. Then show me the model person as an individual, and tell me why they're the model person. All we really want to be is healthy, happy, fed, and uh, we go so far beyond that. We want a drug for everything. We want to be able to not have to do a goddamn thing, you know, sit in our recliners and pop pills and, and eat fast food and uh, watch TV, and that's just complete bullshit. We can't do that, you know. That's where we're going to destroy ourselves because we still have the evolutionary a drive to get things done, to move, to work, to motivate. We need our cardio, we need to get ourselves uh, active, and especially have passions in our lives. And <clears throat> sometimes when we have kind of a breakdown in our life, it can be because we're either looking for a passion or trying to understand ourselves, or it can because, be because we found out something we believed wasn't true, or something we didn't understand was true. We may be switching from religion to religion, or belief to belief, but ultimately it really comes down to your, you're with yourself, always. And you are the only one who can really find your truth, but at the same time you can use who, what you consider a model citizen or a model person to be, or a hero of yours, to look up to and say, how did they live their life? It's not that it's going to work for you that way. It's to say, that's all we really have to go on. And anyone who says they're just taking their own path is completely full of shit. It doesn't matter if, like, I'm going to go off and be a scientist. Well, you're taking someone else's path. Everyone before us laid out the bricks, the groundwork, the foundation for the temple that we're building now. And um, you can go find your own path, but then you have to deal with people in order to have commerce. Unless you're living out in the middle of the woods by yourself, but that's not your own path either. Many, that's how we used to live, you know. Nothing is new under the sun. So the best we can do is take what we find in life and make it work for us, you know? And to realize that everyone is in the same boat. I think when we stop thinking that we're a little bit crazy, as some people do, then and realizing everyone is helps us to understand that and to realize that. And I mean it in a lighthearted way, because some people do have major mental disorders which require medication and sometimes hospitalization, and <clears throat> they can be caused by... They can be induced by something as simple as anxiety. Anxiety-induced can anxiety induced psychosis is a very common thing. Psychosis affects up to 3% of the people, you know. And then schizophrenia is another percentage. And then we have, uh, uh, these, aren't, these are things that, are in, that could happen to a person. But it just shows that our brain chemistry is very delicate, as tough as we are. 
and then we can work ourselves into a state of mind that works for us. People who have extreme religious views, they've just wired their brain in that way. People who are extremely opposed have their brains wired in that way. Um, it's very difficult to rewire ourselves, but we can do it. We have to be fluid. It's called neuroplasticity, and it's not something that goes away just because you get older. Um, but it, it does become more difficult to see things fairly as your brain starts to adapt. It's, we're, we're racing against genetics and, and our heritage here, you know, and trying to move into a new world where everything's different and digitized and trying to understand one another, you know. I'm not sure what else to say about it except that if you have anybody who you know in your life that that maybe is having a moment like that, you know, or you yourself are having a moment where you're kind of losing touch with reality, um, remember you can bring yourself down. You can bring yourself back. You will always return, you know. I just can't tell you how many trips I've had because I think of psychedelic experiences as somewhat like a, a mini psychotic breakdown. In fact, Psychiatrists were using it in the 60s to take to understand what it's like to be schizophrenic because they thought of it as an induced schizophrenia and similar to the experience. Um, but no schizophrenic could tell you because if they take it, it's completely different than if another person takes it and everyone has different effects. Um, but it, it will make you sometimes hear things that aren't there or have synesthesia, but also to have strong effects and pulls towards certain things and believe things that may or may not be true. And it's up to us to find and realize that we do have some intuition within us, but it's something that's developed over time. Wisdom is never won overnight. Wisdom is something that comes with age. We can learn, 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 but until we apply that through our wisdom and prove it to ourselves, it's difficult to really understand. And this is why we grow through steps and climb the rungs of the ladder until we're old and then we die. And how fair is that? So that comes. that goes to the whole next level, which is religion, which I haven't even touched, I haven't even really got into. Um, uh, that's what this psychosis led to as a, as a species, as we started to discover that we didn't understand things. And I'm okay not understanding the bigger question, or the answers, 42. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, 42. I, I turn 42 tomorrow. I, uh, it was it was that movie, uh, yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. We started it this morning, actually, because I was joking with my kid about 42 being the answer to the universe, and they asked the question, they asked the question, and they say, he, the machine, after like a million and a half years, they come back and he says, the answer to the universe is 42. And they're like, what kind of an answer is that? They're like, well, you didn't ask, a, this, the machine says you didn't ask a question. You have to know the question before you can get an answer, and of course, that's our biggest problem. We want to know the answers to life, but what is the question? You know, do we want to know specifically where we're coming from and where we go, who we are, every step of our life? I don't want to know from a psychic what, what's going to happen in my life or any of that garbage. I just want to live and do the best I can. I want to do what I know works and go and fit along and cruise along in that stage, you know, and uh, try to learn some great things along the way and meet some cool people. And y'all are pretty cool people, so... I'm going to leave it at that, and I'll talk to y'all later. I hope y'all have a wonderful night, and uh, stay cool. Stay warm, stay cool, whatever, wherever you're at, and all that shit. Just remember that we're all in this together, and we are really all one. It's not the cheesy namaste, I am you, you are me. It's the real namaste. It's the real connection. It's it's. People say that enlightenment and connection and I am you, you are me, and ego loss and all this is complete bullshit. If you haven't experienced it, you don't understand it. But once you've been there once, you never forget. Once you've had an epiphany, or what they call a satori in some circles, uh, of awareness where you, sm where you understand something fully and grasp it, the real understanding that we are all one, and can feel it and see it, not just think about it. Science is a joke when it comes to understanding those things. They, they can give you numbers and facts and figures, but until you get into the head of the universe, and for me it's through psychedelics, um, you can't really understand it. But if you go too far, you might understand too much. And you're not ready for calculus until you understand algebra. So that's what it's all about in the steps and stages. And it's okay if we don't want to go too far. Because some people just, uh, it's not meant for them. It's not meant for many of us. And, and when we all go too deep, there's a distance where we've all asked too many questions and we're missing the moment, the present, where we're at right now. So, uh... <coughs> 
crucial that we have balance. No matter how far we lean in one direction, we will fall over. We always have to stay somewhere in the middle. So I wish you all luck in your journeys, and I'll talk to you later.